welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, passionate, inspirational speaker, author, poet, and entrepreneur. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I want to give a great big thank you to those of you who are listening today, and here's a great big shout out to all of you listening around the world. I'm delighted and so grateful that you tuned in. I sure hope you're enjoying a fabulous day today and that you're having a fantastic week because you know what? In the grand song of the universe, life is very, very short. It's short and sweet and oh so precious. So I hope you're making a difference in your own life because when you do, you also make a difference in someone else's life. Now a lot of folks want to make their life count for something. And they ask me, how do you do that? Well, it's really very simple. Very simple. You make your life count day by day, step by step, moment by moment, every single day. 365, 24-7. That's what Legacy Living Make Your Life Count is all about. You can learn more about Legacy Living Make Your Life Count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. That's G-L-O-R-I-A, B as in boy, U-R-G-E-S-S dot com. That's the Gloria Burgess website, G-L-O-R-I-A, B-U-R-G-E-S-S dot com. Or by visiting Facebook. And that's facebook.com forward slash dr for doctor, d-r-g-l-o-r-i-a-b-u-r-g-e-s-s-p-h-d forward slash. So today, I want to talk with you about leadership, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Specifically, we're going to focus on women's leadership and forming your own identity as a leader. In other words, today's show is all about asking yourself two very important questions. The first question is, who am I? And the second question is, whose am I? So who am I and whose am I as a leader? Now, to help us address those burning questions, I have a very special guest on my show today. Her name is Melanie Cremona. She is a person of influence, and she is very, very inspiring. Now, Melanie is a leader who makes a difference in her own life and in the lives of so many others throughout the world through her work with the United Nations. She works at the UN's Institute for Training and Research, which is called UNITAR for short. At UNITAR, she heads up the Women's Leadership Program. I met Melanie last fall. We were both attending a women's leadership conference in Stockholm, Sweden. And when I heard her speak about her work, she was positively supercharged about it. So to simply say that she's interested in her work would definitely be an understatement. This young woman is truly passionate about her work. And I must say she is most definitely a woman with a mission. She is on fire to change the world, and in particular, to change the world for women leaders. When you hear her story, you'll learn why she's so passionate about making a difference, about changing the world in this way. I was struck by her passion But, you know, this is just one of the many wonderful qualities that drew me to her. And I should say that drew me and all the other women to Melody at this conference and to her work. Indeed, we were blessed to have her there as one of our honored mentors. (laughs) Melody is 23 years old, and she describes herself as a Lebanese Greek expat. Her work at UNITAR is focused on women and women's leadership. Her specific mission is to strengthen women's participation in multilateral conferences and decision-making forums. 
She's also in charge of organizing high-level events with prominent leaders and personalities, including Nobel Prize winners. Melanie attended the University of Paris 7 and the University of Copenhagen, obtaining her degree in sociology and anthropology. She also obtained the International Diploma in Humanitarian Assistance from Fordham University. Melanie says that she's always dreamed about making a meaningful impact in the world and often likes to question conventional norms. Well, during my conversation with her, you will hear more about her dream. You'll also hear about how she was shaped and formed as a leader, all with a particular focus of serving other leaders. You know, in many ways, Melanie's outlook on life and in her work pulls together the many threads of of what my own life and work are all about. You've heard me talk about some of these threads and themes on this show, the themes of gratitude, authenticity, generosity, strength, passion, presence, hope, and possibility. I just love it. (laughs) Two women, Melanie and me, from very different backgrounds, very different cultures, very different in age and lifestyle, and yet so many common threads. Can I just tell you something? We had a fabulous conversation, and I'm so excited to have this amazing leader with us today. This is going to be a fabulous show. You don't want to miss a single word of it. So, put on your walking shoes, grab your earbuds, or just relax in your favorite chair and grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or a nice, cool glass of water. You're going to want to take notes today. We're going to have a good time. But before I jump into today's show, I just want to take a moment to welcome you. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'd like to extend a special welcome to those of you who are joining my show or if you're joining Talk Network Radio for the very first time. You're in for a real treat. (laughs) I'm excited to have you listening in today, and I'm deeply honored that you've allowed me to be part of your day so you can be inspired by the ideas and resources to make your life count. Today's program is all about women's leadership and developing your own identity as a leader with my guest, Melanie Cremona. Welcome to the show, Melanie. I'm so glad that you're here, and I can't wait to talk with you about your passion for women's leadership. Thank you very much, Gloria. It's such an honor for me to be with you, and uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity um, and for taking the time as well, because we're both talking from different countries, so um, it's such a pleasure as well. Thank you so much. Yes, this is really a blessing for me, and I know it's going to be a blessing for our listeners. Melanie, I want to <laughs> begin by asking you, you know, when I met you, you were just so passionate about what you were uh, what you were doing, and, uh, you know, the way that we met was through a women's leadership conference. And I, I'm just wondering, what made you realize you were so passionate about social problems, including women's rights, gender equality, and women's leadership? Well, yes. I mean, um, I must say that from a young age, I realized I had a very strong empathy towards people in need of help. And I always felt very sensitive and would always make people's problems my own problems. Um, I must say it was a blessing and a curse at the same time because it developed a sense of guilt and purpose in me and a need to feel useful and to contribute something to our society. So I was passionate about philosophy, sociology, about the way society can affect a person's life. And this was the reason why I decided to pursue a degree in sociology. And during my degree, I had to take a gender and sexist course which was uh, mandatory, and I was very skeptical and uh, a bit weirded out about it because I was a firm believer at the time that there was no need to work on feminism, and I was very judgmental, so I believed that anyone who wanted to be equal to men uh, clearly lacked a lot of ambition. So 
I realized I was really stubborn as well during my degree, and I learned so many things that brought me back down to earth. <laughs> so, so many things really made more sense as well around my identity as a woman, and I started understanding how my Lebanese background play a major role in shaping my identity as a woman and how badly feminism was needed in our society, um, especially coming from a Middle Eastern country where it's true that compared to other Arabic countries, women might have a bit more rights, but there are still so many loopholes in the law and so many issues that no one talks about. Um, I also had the chance to do an exchange in Copenhagen for one year, and at the time uh, the prime minister was a female and there is also the queen who plays an important role in the society there. So all these things opened up my eyes and made me realize I was really passionate about gender issues and uh, really wanted me, made me want to work for the UN and do something about uh, all, these, all these problems. Well, thank you. That's, that's quite a background that you have there, Melanie. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that with us. Can you talk with us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced as a woman uh, you mentioned your Lebanese background, and how did your background shape your identity in that perspective? So, yeah, I, I grew up in a society where, paradoxically, you can find many women uh, holding leadership positions in the workplace and being very equal to men. And yet there are still many, many loopholes and paradoxes. So if I can give you an example, um, women can get loans for plastic surgery, um, in religion, the age for marriage is still nine. And in the law, men can rape women as long as they marry them afterwards. Also, women are not able to give their nationality to their children. And there's no clear distinction between sex and rape during marriage because a wife needs to fulfill their, her duties. And religion and patriarchal uh, norms still persist. So let's say there is still a lot of patriarchal problems and issues towards gender equality and respect for women, which makes things really difficult to understand. And given these facts, it has become very difficult to find my identity uh, because women are, are over-sexualized, but at the same time, if they are sexually liberated and free, they, are, they still face a lot of judgment. And I grew up myself being a tomboy, and I still struggle to this day to be very feminine. Um, this means that I was often asked why I was wearing men's clothes, or didn't wear enough jewelry or makeup, or that I should probably find a husband instead of working and focusing on my own growth. So um, I have to also, I have listened to a lot of women while growing up uh, being beaten by their husbands, raped, or forced to abort. Uh, I've listened to women who were scared to talk about their relationships, or to this day are still very much afraid to talk about sex, relationships, or anything related to, to it, simply because it is taboo. Yeah. Um, so these perceptions of how women should be and behave were the main challenges I faced. And it's only when I was able to travel and educate myself that I became more comfortable with my femininity and to become a tomboy without worrying about it. Mm -hmm. So I still face some comments from time to time, even about the fact that I consider myself a feminist. But it affects me less and less. And I also do feel bad for many of my friends in Lebanon and in other countries where the rights of women are oppressed, I mean, where women are oppressed, who still struggle to be free women and, and liberated women. So nowadays, I do feel a bit more comfortable to be directly involved in contributing to the enhancement of women's leadership. But And, and the fact that given, uh, being given the chance to work on the Women's Leadership Program was a blessing that came into my life at the right time and at the right moment. Um, but the challenge I face as well is seeing all these women uh, still struggling, I must say. Yeah, well, thank you. That's amazing, the, the many, many contradictions and what you call paradoxes in your culture. And I think you actually speak for many women around the world. I, I get to travel and speak uh, in various countries. And although, you know, on the surface it seems one way, when you just go like one or two layers deep, you find all of these paradoxes in these in these various places yeah. elsewhere. So thank you for for addressing that and for naming those things. I appreciate it. Um, oh, let me ask you, in your opinion, what are some of the challenges that women face, specifically with regard to leadership? And if you could change one thing, you know, if you could just make it happen, <laughs> what <laughs> yes. things would you change? Could you just talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, it's a very difficult question, and it's, 
actually really interesting at the same time because there are so many things that need to change. And there are things that can be easily changed and some things that are very difficult to change. So if I could, first of all, I would change the law and um, everything related to law and religion because in, in Lebanon, for example, at least, uh, law is, is mainly based on religion and there are so many patriarchal norms that still persist in religion. Um, but then again, you may want to change the law, but there is still the culture that persists. So it's hard to really tell at first because someone would want, would want to change the law, but the most difficult thing to change nowadays is the culture. And if I could change the way the culture is and how the way we communicate with each other, because I believe nowadays that there is a lot of, there, there, there is actually a lack of meaningful conversation in society, and people who want to talk about subjects that are as taboo um, really fear to be judged. And I still struggle a lot with the culture and the, and the, the communication. So if I could change this, I, I would change definitely um, the way people think about women. And uh, because there are so many people I talk to who do not believe gender inequality is such a big deal, and to focus on it wouldn't probably bring more positive discrimination or even worse, make gender distinction persist. Yet gender equality is such an easily achievable goal compared to war, for instance. Um, and to this day, culture is the number one obstacle we all face. So if I could change things, I would definitely start with the law, which is the basis of um, everything in their society nowadays and the culture especially because uh, and the I would change this as well through communication, and that's why I try to do every single day and try to really talk and and dare to talk about subjects that people are afraid to talk about. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, it makes it makes all kinds of sense, and I appreciate you bringing in the fact that culture, you know, culture is such a, a it's it's like a multiplier, you know. <laughs> it yes, makes every exactly. Very difficult to do. It's like, I don't know that much about your culture, but as I hear you talk, I'm imagining that there's so many things from the past for hundreds and maybe even several millennia that are so deeply rooted in the culture that, you know, changing those kinds of things is just very, very uh, daunting. Not impossible, but daunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, Thank you again, Melanie, for shedding the light on some of these areas that you care about, that you're passionate about. Um, and I'm wondering, I know that you work at the UN, and mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on there, and what drew you specifically to work on the Women's Leadership Program? Okay. Um, yes, for sure. I mean, uh, it's certain that my passion for human rights and sociology and contributing to the enhancement of our world brought me to work for the UN. It was certainly a childhood dream, um, and I specialized in humanitarian assistance initially. Um, but life brought me to Geneva at the heart of multilateral diplomacy, and the Women's Leadership Program was handed out to me. It was a very fresh and broad new program uh, and that was launched in 2015 uh, by my colleague um, with the mandate to enhance women's participation in negotiations. So my task my current task and my positions are quite broad, though. I organize high-level events, uh, inviting high-level personalities, uh, such as Nobel Peace Prize, and uh, with the purpose to deliver inspirational stories, uh, talking about leadership um, and how civil society can, can lead also uh, the way things are in our society. And the Women's Leadership Program is a specific program um, with – that has the mandate to build the skills, knowledge, and capacities of women and government officials accredited to the UN and its entities, as well as civil servants and people from the private sector. The core activity under the Women's Leadership Program is to provide capacity building for self-reflection, learning and development, and increase women's participation in decision-making and in politics. Um, it has been expanded to people from other backgrounds uh, who wish to undertake leadership positions too. And I believe this is how we met uh, through a women's leadership workshop and retreat that was done in Stockholm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's all about um, communicating, developing capacities of women, and also um, providing inspirational stories uh, so that people can, can also be part of, the, of major changes on a, on a global scale. I know when I met you at the at the conference in Sweden, 
your presence just seemed to radiate. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it did, you know, and I think, uh, yeah. uh, as I recall, Melanie, many of the women in that in that circle uh, commented to you, uh, you know, something similar, and um, I I just. Um, you know your position and and the work that you're doing there is so so needed and so necessary uh and it's just a, like you said it's a Thank blessing you. that you're able to be there to to help lift these women leaders uh into a new place so that they can shine a light for for the rest of us so thank you for that work thank you very you. much thank you <laughs> you're Thanks. so welcome um, another question I'd like to ask you uh, in relation to the work that you just talked about, um, mm-hmm. you know, because this is, this is big work. You know, this is not something that's going to happen overnight, of course. And so I'm wondering, Melanie, what, what are the things that you think that would help you achieve some of the goals that you laid out? Yes. So, well, mainly since I work on the Women's Leadership Program, um, I, I use the UN as a platform to really reach out to as many people as I can. Um, that's my starting point in a way. Uh, I want to be able to use this platform um, to be able to reach out many people. And since UNITAR is an entirely self-funded organization, independent from the Secretariat of the United Nations, um, this means that we rely on donor contributions. And our main donors are governments, permanent missions, uh, mainly who wish to associate their names to this project and who believe in the impact of capacity building and gender equalities. As I do not have a personal brand on my own to advertise, uh, which I would love to have in the future, um, I wish to appeal to donations through this interview, perhaps, and invite whoever wishes to contribute or discuss solutions and projects or even partnerships to reach out to me to be able to discuss these things. I believe in partnership, union, to help achieve a larger impact. So far, this program has been struggling to be implemented because of of lack of contributions. And one of the major issues we face is that organizations want to do these workshops, want to um, enhance the skills of their women, but always blame uh, the fact that there is no funds or uh, it's not their decisions uh, to to, to send women uh, to participate to conferences. So there are so many excuses out there, but the fact, I, the way to partner and to contribute uh, would really be something very helpful. And I can say that because, well, first, the reaction you, you gave me as well yourself was that it really had an impact on some of the participants. But I do realize the impact myself as well when other participants come to me and telling me, oh, this workshop finally uh, helped me not being shy anymore and re- made me realize how shy I was or made me realize how many barriers I was imposing on myself and how nice and polite I was before and how I need to be more assertive and believe in myself. So I believe that capacity building and education is something really everyone needs to focus on, and help from um, partnerships would really uh, is, is really needed. So this is how I t- shape my identity myself, through education and through capacity building. And I believe as well that what would help is communicating with other people. So in my daily life, I try as much as I can to believe I can make an impact. So what would help is for people to really communicate and discuss about gender inequality and stop being so judgmental in a way. Um, I believe in communication, capacity building, and just really having discussions with people, um, creating new partnerships, and highlighting the importance of, of women's participation in negotiations um, or gender equality or the benefits of gender equality would really be something that is needed. So I hope I, I answered the question correctly. Yes, you did. Thank you. Now, yeah. you mentioned um, many things uh, in this question, so I just kind of want to unpack it a little bit. Uh, you mentioned yes. UNITAR. Can you tell us what that acronym stands for, Melanie? Yes. It's the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. Okay, thank you. It's the training arm of the UNS. Yes. Okay, and so that's UNITAR. And you talked about building a platform so that you can reach more people. You talked about funding. Uh, you talked about the kind of the stigma, you know, which is connected to funding. Uh, I think there's still a, a general sense that women are less than and we have to do, you know, more to get to the table, that kind of thing. 
Um, yes, and you also exactly. talk about the importance of capacity building and communicating and, and having conversations with one another. Yes. Yeah. Did I get most of those things in? Yes, yes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> Great. Yes. And, you know, I, I think as you were talking, I was thinking about, um, I think Margaret Mead said, you know, never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. It's the only way that change happens. Um, well, and, exactly, yes. Yeah, and these conversations that you're talking about, it really is one woman, one circle, one group at a time. And I'm just, uh, again, just delighted that you are involved in this work. Uh, so thank you again thank for you. Uh, for what you're doing and what you're sharing. And I'd love to ask you a question. We talked about this several months ago when we uh, just chatted about the show. So this is a more personal question, not about your work per se, but a more personal mm-hmm. question, Melanie. Is that okay if I ask you one of those? Of course, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I would love for you to just talk a little bit about one or two or, you know, some of the women in your life, women leaders in particular, who have influenced you and your leadership. Wow. Um it's really it's really interesting as a question I must say um and it's very hard as well to answer because th- there are so many women at the same time and paradoxically enough there's not many women leaders that are portrayed in society um which makes people sometimes a bit uh lost when they have this question so I don't want to sound cliché by saying this but it's true that my mom uh, was one of the major female um, figure I had growing up, and and it could really sound cliche because everyone grows up with a female figure that is close to 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 their family in a way. But um, my mom was really a very strong woman, and she really had a very tough background because she had to take care of her parents alone. She had to really work hard and. Uh, set aside her education to be able to really provide for her own parents. And I've never seen her cry or um, being devastated. And I'm not saying that's a good thing at the same time, but I've seen her always very strong and very resilient, um, which really inspired me in my leadership journey because I realized that it's true that life will give you a lot of lemon. It's really how you you deal with them that will shape you your personality in a way. And her and her sister were quite strong women, and they were very. Uh, my 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 aunt as well was very involved in protest as a, when she was young, and she's very. Um, she's she she's a leader in her own heart, and those two women influenced me a lot. But if I have to to speak about um, famous figures, I must say that. Um, maybe Rosa Parks and Oprah uh, were two uh, female leaders that inspired me for their determination and for embracing their challenges and doing something about it. And also, it really might sound silly, but when I was younger, I grew up watching a lot of um, TV shows. And these TV shows had a lot of female protagonists. There were goofy and uh, who were embracing their goofiness and clumsiness and at the same time um, being comfortable with it. And I do believe this is needed because it really allowed me to be very comfortable with my own self. So I also grew up watching The Powerpuff Girls, which is an animated cartoon and might sound really innocent, but the fact to see that women had powers while at the same time being feminine and embracing their own femininity and characters was really inspirational for me because I really wanted to grow up being a superwoman, and this helped a lot <laughs> in my determination. <laughs> yeah, so. and what I think you're saying is that it helps to have role models. You know, uh, even course. if we, as a, you know, as a child, you don't think about your mom or your aunt or these uh, figures that you're watching on TV. Uh, you yes. don't think about them as role models, but they impress you in some way. Something about their spirit, something about, you know, as you mentioned, how they overcome challenges, their determination, their it just uh, ignites something within us, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. I mean, it's it's very silly to say it and to talk about cartoons and um, TV shows, but it actually really plays a major role. I mean, if you grow up watching um, tales where uh, there are princesses waiting for their princes, 
Yeah. Um, you might have a different perspective than watching um, girls who have powers and are saving the world before bedtime. <laughs> so I, I was really always uh, <laughs> inspired by that. And I do believe that nowadays we really need more figures like that to, to, to provide to, to young women. Because I, I discussed a lot with women that were younger than me. And the fact that I highlighted all these things about masculinity and um, being afraid and shamed of, of your clumsiness or your goofiness or things like that really talked a lot to them. And they were like, oh, thank God someone is thinking the same as me. And we really tend to hide all these problems, but they're quite important in my opinion. And, and yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Things. You know, what you're, what you're saying is uh, right in my uh, sweet spot because the images that we project, whether they're through cartoons or TV shows or movies or, you know, magazines or whatever, we are what we consume. And if we're consuming images of women mm -hmm. that are stereotypical and that keep us bound and repressed and, and, and restricted, that's what we're going to metabolize yeah. for ourselves and imagine for ourselves. I'm, I'm reading a book by Thomas More right now um, that I love. Oh, I've yes. read it a number of times. It's called Care of the Soul. <laughs> and, yes. you know, one of the things he talks about that just really grabs me, he says being, being follows imagination. And so when you say that you saw these images that, you know, were goofy images that allowed you to be comfortable in your own skin, I mean, that makes so much sense to me. I think we okay. talked about the arts and leadership and how we can use the arts to really help transform those images into images that are women who are innovative and imaginative and <laughs> creative yes. and all of those yes. things. So thank you again for sharing that bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you for listening and not judging as well because... <laughs> I mean, people can say, oh, well, out of all these female leaders, uh, these are the ones that she could come up with. But as you say, I mean, we are shaped by what we watch and, and see when we grow up. So <laughs> I do believe Absolutely. it's important to address this issue. Absolutely. Thank you. So uh -huh. I'm wondering if there's a project that you're working on right now or something that's coming up for you that you'd like to make sure that our listeners hear about. Yeah, one of the projects I currently work on is the Women's Leadership Program. As I previously said, this program is really important and dear to my heart because I do believe in capacity building. I do believe in education and, and enhancing skills that many women uh, need. And I know this because of the feedback I've received from lots of participants who took, took these workshops and who came to me and told me that, it really changed their lives in a way, and it really opened up their eyes, and it made them more confident in themselves. And this acts as a multiplier effect because they can go back to their capitals in a way or to their countries and provide trainings on their own to other women. And I think that this program is really important, and people can reach out to me at any time at leadership at unitar.org to discuss, to even share experiences, um, to discuss possibilities of partnerships or contributions. We really want to be inclusive in the UN and try to really um, work on, on partnering with other organizations to provide more workshops and on a larger scale. So this is my professional project, which is also a personal project. Um, but as a personal project, I've tr been trying as well to really um, tell people about the importance of, of women's leadership and gender equality. So I do a lot of communication with people. I try to really open conversations, and I would really like to invite the audience who listens to, to do that in their own lives and to really take a step back and see how their unconscious bias can affect as well their own actions because they did for me, and it's only through communication and open-mindedness that I was able to really uh, see how judgmental I was and how uh, women can also be very um, discriminatory towards others. I mean, it's 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 important to communicate. So these are the personal projects to really try to have an impact on a very small scale at first and try not to really be too ambitious uh, while being scared not to do anything. But it's just my, my main message is to also say that there's a saying that says, I wonder why sometimes uh, no one did anything about it or someone should have done something about it. And it's important to realize that you are that anybody and you are that something, that someone, and you can do something about anything. And it doesn't have to be 
a major impact or something that is really big. It can be really a conversation or a communication with someone or a remark or taking a step back towards our own beliefs and our own um, judgments um, to be to try to be more open and um, anyone can make a change at any time and yeah, I do believe that this is really important so yeah yeah, well, thank you. What you're saying is is so important. Many people that I meet in my leadership travels, I work with leaders of all ages uh, in lots of different cultures, um, women, men, young people, et cetera. And a lot of times they go, you know, they, you know, I'm just one person. What can I do to change the world? And mm-hmm. as you just said, Melanie, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be written across the sky, right? It, doesn't, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm, it can exactly. be one small thing in your world that makes a difference in somebody else's world. And uh, that yeah. really is, I think, the heart of – of uh, of this work of leadership work, um, you know, there's some things that are that are very large in scale, and uh, there's some things that are that are fairly fairly small that are, you know, within our reach, within our grasp. So thank you for making that distinction for for our listeners. Yeah. And even and even given your example, having a radio show to discuss all these things and. Um, it's really inspiring in a way because it's it's definitely through listening to people and through exchanging ideas that we can make a change and get even inspired to do new things as well. So thank you as well for for doing this yourself and for giving me the opportunity to to speak up as as well. <laughs> you are so welcome. And and to your point, mm-hmm. you know there there are so many people uh, in countries that don't have the kind of infrastructure, communications infrastructure yes. that we enjoy. Uh, in uh, various parts of Europe, uh, where you are, uh, and in the United mm-hmm. States, and in other well-funded and you know so-called developed countries, <laughs> um, definitely. And but but everybody seems to have a cell phone, you know. <laughs> and so yes. If you, if you have a cell phone, you can have access to to a show like this. And yes. one of my secret goals, just so you know, is to have this kind of conversation so that people all over the world can can uh, tune in and listen because that's how we grow without access to this kind of information. You know, you're just kind of stuck in your own your own little world and you may not know what's happening out there and what's possible for you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So and again, I want to thank inspiring. you for the work that you're doing, for the passion that you have, for bringing your, your background uh, into play and um, being inspired by those women in your life who made a difference for you when you were younger and that you're now able to radiate that and and do the same for other other women. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. You're so welcome. I wish you a good rest of your – it's evening there now for you and it's morning for me. (laughs) Good good evening, and um, I can't wait to introduce you to, to my listeners. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you also for the audience who are listening as well. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Fantastic. Wonderful nuggets. Thanks again to Melanie Cremona for being my guest today. If you'd like to learn more about Melanie's work, or, as she mentioned during today's conversation, if you'd like to donate to Unitar's programming to support women leaders, you can reach out to Melanie via this email address, and that's leadership at unitar.org, leadership at unitar.org. And remember, unitar is U-N-I-T-A-R dot org. So if you want to reach out to Melanie, she'd be very happy to hear from you. Now, if you missed any part of this week's broadcast about women's leadership developing your own leadership identity, you can listen to the podcast right here on Talk Network Radio. Now, you can also find me on iTunes, SoundCloud, Alexa, and many, many other places. Now, before I close today's show, I just want to give a shout-out to all the women, all the women all around the world, and to my mom, (laughs) who just celebrated her birthday. Yay! Love you, Mom! When Melanie mentioned her mom as one of the women leaders who influenced her, you know, I was thinking the very same thing, as I know many of you were, too. Because you know what? I ask this question a lot of people all over the world. 
Um, I was just presenting a keynote a few days ago, and this was one of the questions I asked the folks in the audience. Who inspired you when you were a young girl or boy? Who did you look up to? Who did you admire? And why? And you know what? No matter where I am in the world, the response to that question is always the same. Who inspired you? Who influenced you? This is what I hear. Well, my mom (laughs) or my dad or my grandpa or my grandma, right? So, you know, it's amazing how much impact we have as leaders in our own home. Now, most parents don't think about themselves as leaders, right? They're just kind of scratching their head figuring out this parenting things, but we are. That's what we are. We're leaders for our children, and we have so much influence and impact in our own home with our own children. So moms and dads out there, even when it seems like your your daughter or son isn't paying attention, <laughs> let me tell you something. They are. They're listening, okay? They're listening, and they're soaking it all in. And more than anything else, They are watching you. Let me be really clear. They are scoping you out. (laughs) They are observing every single thing you do, every little nuance, right? More importantly, they're watching you because they want to see if what you say and what you do line up, right? Our actions really do speak much louder than our words. A good friend of mine who's a former CEO, she says this, you know, whether you're a parent or whether you're in the boardroom, as a leader, in any context, your walk has got to talk louder than your talk talks. (laughs) That's great, isn't it? Let me repeat that. She says, your walk has got to talk louder than your talk talks. Now, why is that? Because that's how we build the bridge called trust. Right? That's how we strengthen our bond with those we love. That's how we deepen our relationships, one step at a time, inch by inch, mile by mile, and smile by smile, (laughs) at home, at work, and in any area of our lives. Every single day, 365, 24-7. So, ask yourself, how is your walk lining up with your talk? You know what? It's never too late to get your walk and your talk lined up, to get your act together, so to speak, so you can take it on the road and make a difference in someone's life, the difference that only you can make. Remember this, how you live is how you lead. How you live is how you lead. Now, if you happen to miss any part of this week's broadcast, or if you missed last week's show, you can listen to a podcast of the show at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. How about that? You can check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash legacyliving.html. That's www.talknetworkradio.com talknetworkradio.com, all smushed together, no hyphens, forward slash Legacy Living, L-E-G-A-C-Y-L-I-V-I-N-G dot H-T-M-L. Before I close today, I want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's show and for allowing me to share Just a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day. 365, 24-7. Legacy living is one of the many ways to make your life count. Once again, thank you for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this has been Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next week right here on Talk Network Radio for another show of Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. We're here again right here, Talk Network Radio, don't miss it. And 
don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Have a fantastic day. And remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next week. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day. Be sure to make it a yes kind of day. And remember, celebrate. Celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life